Hi, here to do Algebra 2 notes on Chapter 2, uh, Section 4, which is the graph of y equals k times x. Uh, you may recognize that as being a line equation. If you go back to probably the line equation that you learned most was y equals mx plus b. And this part here in blue I probably wouldn't bother writing if I were you. But of all the line equations you probably learned, if multiple ones, this is the most common one. And if we go back to that, m is always the slope and just kind of more doing this for emphasis rather than anything else. Um, so I wouldn't write the blue again, but y equals mx plus b, m is the slope. x and y are your variables, just like normal. And b was the y-intercept. That's the y-intercept. Which really, what that means is that that's going to be where our line goes through the x-axis. Or I'm sorry, through the y-axis. So if I were to take and put a graph on here and have a line something like this, uh, the y-intercept is going to be this point right here, uh, the point where the line crosses the y-axis. So if y equals kx is our new equation for today, um, there is nothing after it. So the question becomes, what is b? Well, b has to be 0, because y equals kx plus 0 is the same as y equals kx. So in other words, when we have the new stuff for today, I'll erase my ink here, um, this new stuff is always going to be a line equation, so it's y equals kx, and it's going to be a line equation that goes through the origin or through the center of a normal graph. The question really becomes then, what is slope? And it feels kind of dumb to try to teach this. this is something you guys have done for years. Uh, but just so we're covering our bases, I'm going to maybe say, what is slope? And slope, often they use, well, pretty much always, they use the letter m. And a lot of times uh, when that's explained to people to begin with, it's referred to as rise over run. And really when they mean that, they're talking about what's the change in the y values, how much do you rise or how much do you go down, uh, divided by the run, the change in x. So change in y would be in the numerator, the fraction divided by change in x. Uh, some teachers uh, will kind of be cutesy and teach it as though rise, as spelled with a Y, so R-Y-S-E instead of R-I-S-E over run. I always thought about it from the standpoint of if you're running, it's a whole lot easier to run on horizontal ground, said be on your x-axis. Uh, but from there, uh, if you have the actual equation, the way we really write it is given two points, x1 comma y1. So that's just my first x and my first y. And a second point, which would be x2 and y2, that the equation for slope, m, is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. I have had some people say it's y1 minus y2 over x1 minus x2. It's totally fine whichever way you do it. The point is you have to start with one point and do that point's y value minus the other point. And then on the denominator start with that point's x value divided by the x value of the other point. For example, say we have two points. Uh, and I'll maybe say 317 and uh, 12, 9. The most common mistake I've seen is that people will go through and they'll always do the larger number minus the smaller number. And in this case, if you do that, it's going to get you into trouble. So what I encourage people to do if they tend to make mistakes is go through and just quickly label the points um, x1, y1, x2, y2. And then as they're going through and doing their slope equation, y2, well, you just go and line it up. y2 is 9 minus y1, which is 17, all divided by x2 minus x1, so 12 minus 3. That gives us a 9 in the denominator and a negative 8 in the numerator. And that's good. If you ever end up with a negative in the denominator, you'd have to either move it to the numerator, the top of the fraction, or put it in front of the fraction in order to have it officially be simplified. One thing that is new uh, for slope in this section is that they start talking about grades. And grades is really just another way of saying, you know, the slope. Um, if we're looking at the slope equation, and I'm maybe going to say that that's uh, m for slope equals, uh, we'll say, change in y, or rise over the run. Um, out west, out east, if you're in the mountains and driving, you'll sometimes see signs of the big truck on it on a hill, and it'll say, caution, steep grade, you know, 5% next two miles. 
so if you're doing that, it's really trying to say that the slope, the grade, is 5%. Uh, so when we're doing math, 5%, we don't actually write it as a percentage. We move that decimal two places and get 0 0.05. So that's going to be my slope. So if you get the question that says, well, how steep really is that? You could look at what's the rise or the change in y over the change in x. And uh, say you have 100 feet and you want to figure out, well, how much is the road going to go up or down in 100 feet? Uh, so y is what we're trying to find. What's the change in the height? Uh, divided by a run or an x value of 100. And you set that equal to 0.05. Now if you want to try to solve that, uh, y was divided by 100. So we need to do the inverse of division, which is multiplication. Multiply both sides by 100. That makes the 100 drop out on the right-hand side. And we're left with y equals 5. So for a 5% grade, as you go 100 feet horizontally, you're going to have a change of 5 feet vertically. Hopefully I remember to pass this sheet out to you guys in class today. If not, you'll be getting it tomorrow. But this is actually something we're going to be going over for the next few sections. Today, section 4, we do this column here with the lines. Tomorrow, 2-5 will be the parabolas. And then 2-6 covers hyperbolas and tornadoes, where really tornadoes are inverse squares. But for today, at least we want to look at uh, this one here. I want to point out my legend here in the upper left that the line I have drawn here with the positive slope is in solid and the line that's going downward is dashed and then it has a negative slope or a negative k. And like we said at the beginning, uh, the line equations y equals kx and k then is going to be our slope value. Because it's k times the variable, not k divided by the variable from section 1 um, and section 2, we know it's a direct variation. Uh, continuous will make a little bit more sense when we get over to section 6, but essentially continuous is really just saying that you can you draw the graph without lifting your pencil. And other than perhaps making the dashed line, you know, you'd have to lift your pencil, but if you're doing a real line with a negative slope, you wouldn't have to, so it's continuous. Asymptotes we'll talk about later, and that's a little bit awkward. Um, because you have, the k is the, the slope, if you have a positive k, you have to have a positive slope, negative k, negative slope. Uh, this sheet will be more handy in the next couple days when we go over some of this stuff. But for now, you've got to have the line.